to church. I just want to give a warm welcome to those of you who are viewing us online. And I want to welcome everyone who is, who is here this morning. Um, I, have a, I have a question. I have a question for everyone. How many of you, how many of you think Christian education is an important thing for, for us in our country? Raise of hands. <laughs> so this morning, um, uh, a dear friend of mine named Tyrone is going to be sharing with us a little, a little bit about our, our college and seminary, Horizon in Saskatoon. And he's going to be sharing with us how important it is to raise up the next generation in the word and in Christian, Judeo-Christian values. And so uh, we're very excited to have Tyrone speak, uh, speak this morning. And I also, before we begin, I have one announcement. I received a text message about 10 o'clock last night from a cer certain Jordan Traxel, and he would like me to tell you all that on April 13th, 2023, at 8.47 p.m., our son Nash Isaac Gabriel Traxel came into the world at six pounds and is a very, very healthy baby boy. Amen. With that, let's go into our uh, let's go into our reading this morning. We're going to be reading from the book of Psalms, chapter eight, and this is what it says. It says, "The Lord, O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name." in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established, you have established strength because of your foes. To still the enemy and the avenger, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which you've set into place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you would care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands, you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our, o Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let's pray. Lord God, we just glorify you and we give you honor and praise lord god our our prayer this morning is that as a body we would worship you well lord god we we praise you for your goodness and we worship you that you are the god of love and you remove our sins as far as the east is from the west Lord, we, we worship you and we honor you and we pray that as we sing these songs and as the scriptures are open this morning and we pray our prayers that our Heavenly Father would be glorified, that Jesus would be proclaimed as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that the power of the Holy Spirit would manifest amongst us this morning. We pray this in the name of Jesus and all of God's children said, Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I missed you guys too. We listened every Sunday. And uh, yeah, it was 
we had we had a good time in Scotland wrapping up some stuff and and uh, saying goodbye to my dad and knowing that he's in heaven and with Jesus and it was a good celebration. And then I so I'm feeling like do I speak with a Scottish accent because I just got back from Scotland or <laughs> or are we all still rodeoing and ready to go? <laughs> CD, um, but we got to raise some money for that first, so <laughs> if you want on your reoffering envelopes, <laughs> but shake the atmosphere on there, and, and after you tithe, then you can give some offerings, and once we've raised a certain amount of money, which I won't tell you, because the Holy Spirit's going to tell you how many thousands to give, and, <laughs> and then you can also buy a shirt. Says, uh, yeah, your banner over me is victory. We should sing that one this morning, too. All right, this one's called No Jesus. Jesus is the truth and the life. Forever we're joined in his name. We Truth forever will change. No mercy. Jesus will set you free. Jesus. Truth will set you free. No love. Jesus will set you free. No Jesus.
Spirit gives us joy. We find wisdom in His words, so listen to His voice. No mercy. Jesus will set you free. No Jesus. church this morning. Oh, 
Sunday of every month to sing happy birthday to people whose birthdays are in the month. But Pastor Jack already threatened me if we didn't sing it this morning. <laughs> he threatened me with violence. Or he was going to play the violin. One of the two. I don't know. Violin or violins. I don't know. Does there anybody else besides Bev who had their birthday in April? Oh, cool. All right. And Nash, yes. Nash Livy had a birthday. Wow. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday.
with heaven's authority we take back our destiny because we belong to the Lord. I speak and I speak to the Oh, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fathers, we stand in your presence this morning. We are grateful for who you are and for the work that you've done in our lives. And the work that was done was because we surrendered. As we gave you those hurts, you healed them. As we gave you those worries, you guided us. As we gave you our confusion, you gave us peace. And so today, Father, as we are here in your presence this morning, we surrender those things, Lord, we need yet to surrender to you. We pray, Father, that you'll continue to mold our lives, Lord, as we are that clay in your hands. There is no better hands than yours to put our lives. Lord, as we continue to map out our future, our tomorrows, Father, we have great confidence that you'll be in the middle of all of it. You'll be there. You'll give us strength and wisdom and guidance. You'll give us peace and joy. Whatever it is, Lord, that we need as we walk with you will always be there. We just thank you, Lord, for all you're doing, Lord, and in our lives as a family, Lord, in our lives as a church, the ministries, Lord, that you're birthing, you're developing, you're creating. We are excited to see what God is doing. We're excited because you're doing what you do in our lives and through our lives. We just pray, Lord, you'll bless the ministries that are here and continue to grow new ministries, Lord, through our lives. Help us, Lord, to reach more people as a family of God than we've ever reached before. Lord, just to touch this world with the transforming power of Jesus Christ. What can cleanse us from our sins? Nothing. Absolutely nothing but the blood of Jesus. And so we give you praise. We give you praise. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. We love you, Jesus. And in your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 God is good. This young lady is heading back, and if you are three to five years old, feel free to join her as she will lead you to Children's Church. Happy birthday, Bev. And happy <laughs> birthday, Bev. <laughs> Amen. Amen. After this, I'm going to give her the rest of the day off. I'm such a good guy. Praise the Lord. We do have a few announcements to draw to your attention. And uh, Bible study at 1.30 is on today. Gordon is looking after that. And so we just remind you of that and encourage you to be a part of that. And Grit and Grace, the ladies group, is meeting on Wednesday night. And ladies, come expecting God to do something. Amen? Amen. Not do something with you, but do something through you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I heard you had a pretty good time with the... A young group that you won't let me go to. So <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I had my own fun. Praise the Lord. I don't remember what I did, but I'm sure it was fun. <laughs> I got to be careful how I say that. Because as I was shaking Barry's hand, I was had a cup of water and a cup of coffee in my hands. And I said, I got a drinking problem. <laughs> the problem is I don't have a third hand. <laughs> I have my own group. It's all my friends, me, myself, and I. Amen. Young people is Friday, right? Young people is on? No, we had it last night. Young people. Young. Younger than you. Oh, younger than me. Yes. Youth. 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 Yes. Youth. Yes. Youth. Yes. Youth. Yes. Teenagers. Okay, I'm going to behave myself. <laughs> Say nothing. God is good. Oh, when I, that's my, that's my get, yeah, that's my start over. That's my reset button, so praise the Lord. It is all good. I think that is the, oh, hey, barbecue season is coming upon us. Yeah. How many of you excited about that? Yeah. Praise the Lord. That is going to be great. And speaking of barbecue seasons, we are kind of planning 
a Sunday afternoon at the lake. I talked to Stoney, by the way, they're at the trade fair a little bit. And uh, you know, it's time we have a baptism service again. Amen? And so if you're a candidate for water baptism, talk to myself or talk to Chris, and we will further prepare you for that. And we're going to get together some Sunday afternoon, hopefully in June. And, uh, just have, and we're deciding, do we do the whole day there, like go there in the morning and have church? Uh, how many think that's a great idea? Yeah. And the rest of you, you can come here and just whatever, hang out. <laughs> we'll figure that out. We'll let you know, but then have a barbecue and uh, a lot of fun and baptism and the kids can play and, and uh, you know, us old guys will dunk the young guys. It'll be fun. Now I can't go near the water, can I? Because I'll get dunked for sure. So praise the Lord. We were planning that, so let me know if you're a candidate for water baptism, and uh, we will talk with you and, and better prepare you for that. So I believe now that is the announcements. Ushers, would you come? One, two. One, two. Am I on with the green? There you go. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace to be a blessing because you're the one that first blessed us. And you told us that you just loved us just the way we are. And because you loved us, you give us a son. You give us your son. So, Heavenly Father, we are delighted. We are privileged to give back to you out of what you have given unto us. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you accept these as sacrifices and use it for your glory. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank All right, well, without further ado, I'm going to invite my friend Tyrone to come up, and, and this right. is Tyrone, Tyrone Dick, and I will, I will let you, I'll let you take it from here, Tyrone. Sounds Let's good. Give a thank you, thank you. I'm just going to, yeah, stick this up here for now. Um, but... Uh, for the first bit, as I'm introducing, I'm just going to come back down here for a little bit, because I just feel like it's more casual. Uh, oh, is this a little bit too loud? Or maybe it's too close to me. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so yeah, I got introduced as, as Tyrone. I have the privilege of being called out of darkness and to serving the Lord in his kingdom of light. Amen, right? Yeah. This is, this is the, the, joy, the joy that God has given me. He's also called me out of Manitoba to serve in Saskatchewan. So whether that's equivalent or not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just, just joking, just joking. I, I have the privilege of serving at our Bible college here in Saskatoon uh, as a college ambassador. I'm originally from Winkler, Manitoba, where I did my program at Horizon College. So I'll get into that a little bit more, but I just wanted to, yeah, just introduce myself to you guys. It's been such a huge joy just to, to be here this weekend. I was able to be a part of the youth group here, young adults, last night with, with Pastor Chris, and now uh, the service here this morning. And I just got to say that I just sense the spirit here in such an amazing way. And we've already just had some exciting stories. Uh, my friend Sam here can testify. We've seen some healings already at youth and, and at young adults tonight. So God is just moving. So we just give God the glory. We believe he's going to do so much more. So, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just super pumped, super pumped to share the word also that God's put on my heart. So, um, but yeah, before that, I just wanted to share, because I am here on behalf of Horizon. We've got a booth back there. If you are thinking about, yeah, college or seminary, wanting to learn more about your faith, um, Go check that out after the service, um, and I'll, if you have any questions for me, I'd love to answer. But yeah, so I'll, I'll just get back up here. He's got a slideshow, just uh, show you guys. Are we up there? How's it looking? How is it? Oh, it's, it's almost there. Just got, just got to push it over a little more. 
All right, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just talk a little bit more about it. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, yeah, we're good. So, so yeah, I, I work for Horizon College and Seminary, which is a school in, in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And so as a college and a seminary, for those of you who don't know, I didn't actually know until I went to Horizon what the difference was. So um, I'll just go a little bit back here. Is this, uh, there we go. Okay, so sorry here. Um, so for the college level, we have uh, your undergrad. So this is a program that I did. I did my Bachelor of Theology degree in pastoral leadership. So it's a four-year program where I... Um, just grew so much. I'm, I'll share more about my own story as well later in, in, in the message too, but uh, just to give a brief example. So it's a four-year program that I did at the college level, but we also have a seminary level where you take your master's programs. So it's, it's to give you an opportunity wherever you're at in life, whether you would want to take your undergrad or whether you would qualify for a seminary as well. So for those people that are just wanting to grow, grow in your faith, wanting to take a step and in growing in your leadership, growing in, in spiritual maturity, growing in how to understand the word. So much stuff is what we focus on at Horizon. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more. And so what, one thing, is this? Oh, you know what? I think I set, <laughs> I set my PowerPoint, I think, to, or is it not? I hope, I hope I didn't say this wrong, but, because it keeps switching by itself. But okay, so um, I want to just first share here, we have this uh, conference coming up. So this is for all senior youth uh, coming up in the last Saturday of May. So this is a conference that we got. We got some, uh, we got some sponsors. So it's a free event. And so it's for all senior youth on May 27th. Uh, so uh, there's, there's going to be some messages, some breakout sessions. Uh, there's going to be a gym blast and all sorts of stuff. So it's going to be a really amazing time. And so if you know anyone in, in, uh, in senior youth, uh, just send them out to Saskatoon for the day. Um, and the registration is, um, well, there's a QR code, but if you want, I can, I can give it to you later as well. Um, thanks, team up there, for helping me get this straight here. <laughs> um, so I'll share a little bit more about Horizon. So there's a lot of Bible colleges, even in Saskatchewan. We have so many, which is really awesome. Um, but because I work for Horizon, I, I obviously will, <laughs> will give my best... Uh, encouragement towards the school and because I, God changed my life so much through it. So I'll share just a few of our, um, you know, I, sorry, I just think I said, maybe I've actually set it to, to change every 15 seconds. So there might be a setting back there. My bad. I, uh, so I, I hope that doesn't change it too much. But uh, yeah, so, <laughs> my bad. so uh, what, one thing we have that, that's distinct uh, about us is we have uh, with our new facility in Saskatoon, uh, we have really invested in infrastructure that has allowed us to, uh, to, uh, to offer all of our courses online. So we have this really amazing live streaming Zoom option, which I actually did from Winkler, Manitoba, where I'm from. So I was able actually to do, I'd say, 95% of my program online as a Zoom student while I was interning at my church uh, in Winkler. So it was a really, really unique opportunity. Horizon really invests well in that so that people can, whether they want to take classes online or on site or online, you have both options for most of our classes. So it's just really, really exciting and uh, um, uh, to be able to, well, to not maybe have to drive like two and a half hours all the time to maybe go for class. If that's what you don't want to do. So uh, really, really cool. Sorry, this thing keeps, I want to I stay here. Uh, I don't know why this thing is doing this. Yeah. So, so um, <laughs> another thing is we, we are a fully accredited uh, and, and uh, so we have fully accredited degrees that are biblically, biblically founded, that, that focus on building your relationship with God, growing your leadership, and all sorts of stuff that, that prepare you in all sorts of ways for, for God's kingdom, to serve in God's kingdom. So a uh, great way to, to expand your, your growth in, in your relationship with God. Another thing is we have uh, competency-based education uh, at the college level, which allows you to learn in a way that's relational with your professors as you're allowed to revise your assignments. And, and so uh, you, you, you actually get to learn more as, as you get your assignment back. You're allowed to revise your assignments so that you actually learn more about what God is teaching you through your assignment, but then you also get a better grade from it. So it's a way of teaching that we have at Horizon that, that really allows us, uh, our students, to go, go deeper in, in their studies, so. Sorry. Is this, this is a PowerPoint? You know, honestly, maybe we could just, mm. yeah, okay, <laughs> sounds good. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, so, uh, another, yeah, so we have, hmm. 
uh, uh, let's see here. We have, because we're a smaller college, we also have smaller class sizes, which for me was a really big benefit. And, and so it, it allowed me to really connect with, with my peers, even though I was on Zoom. It allowed me to, to, to really uh, be also personal with the professors as well, because you're able to ask questions and, and talk with them. And so it just became a really powerful growth experience to have a smaller class as well. Um, so... So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to share uh, about the school. And, and if you guys have any questions, just feel free to talk to me after. I can share more about some of our scholarship options and all sorts of good stuff if, if, if you're thinking about it at this point. So with that, with, with, on that note, we'll, we'll maybe get into, into the message at this point. Um, so, but before that, I just want to just open up in prayer. So if you guys could just pray with me. Let me do that. So Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for your spirit here this morning. Um, thank you for the way that you want to make yourself known to us. And, and we want to just, just submit ourselves to the, to, to the power, to the wind of the Holy Spirit as you lead and direct our lives. May we uh, just be caught up with you. May, you. may you manifest your glory in our lives and show us the freedom and the joy that you've called us to in this journey. Um, let the words that I speak be your words and, and all the glory be to you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, so this, this message is, is something that's just been so, uh, so powerful on my heart because what I, what I really believe is that all of us are designed with, with a capacity to, to, to contain God's glory, the, uh, the, the glory that he's, he's shared with us through Jesus Christ. And this glory is, is so multifaceted. It is, it is so full and there's this a, a level of depth um, that we'll never really be able to explore fully. And until I think we, we, we meet God in heaven. But I want to touch on today this, what we do have, this, this gift that God has given us in jars of clay to be able to um, behold God's glory and become uh, changed like him. So I want to, yeah, open up just with an example. So here in, here in Saskatchewan, uh, uh, we have this uh, Manitou Beach, right? I, I've heard of it. I haven't actually been to it yet. But there's this, this uh, yeah, this, this saltwater lake. And so let's say your family, as a family, you want to take your, your, your family on a vacation. Um, uh, but you, you actually have this in, in mind. You want to take your, your, your kids to, to Israel. You want to show them the Dead Sea. You want to show them the whole Israel experience. And and so you have this whole thing in plan. You're, you're telling your kids, like, this is going to be awesome. You're going to see this really cool saltwater lake. Uh, you're going to see where Jesus walked and all this stuff. But so you actually leave. You're, you're heading towards the Saskatchewan, uh, to the Saskatoon airport. You're ready to go to Israel. But on the way, you're like, huh, maybe we should stop at Manitou Beach. And so uh, you, you get off you, 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 uh, and you spend some time at the lake. And, and let's say your kids are at the young age. Say they're like, you know, two and, and four years old. What are the odds that they might think, oh, this is maybe what my parents are talking about with this vacation? Hmm, it seems like saltwater lake. It's, it's, it's kind of picturesque. It looks pretty cool. I, I don't know. I, I feel like those kids, they might be tempted to just be like, hey, you know, this is already a cool vacation. Why would we go anywhere else? But the thing is, they don't actually understand what the parents meant by a vacation in Israel. So just to, we'll, we'll go from there because... Uh, so I want you guys to understand what I'm saying here is, this, is in ways that this relates to us as well and, and how I think God is our Heavenly Father wants to take us to so many uh, deeper places in our relationship with Him and our ability to, to behold Him and to become like Him uh, that I, I want us to see that there is uh, in, in our humanity this struggle to settle. Uh, and so I want us to, to kind of see the way that God is calling us uh, deeper in him. And, and, and before I get more into my message, I want to share my own story in this because it, it's when, when God became real in my life and when I realized that there was more of God that he wanted to share in my life. And, and if the PowerPoint doesn't work, it's okay. I'll just, I'll just go. So, um, so with, with, with the Lord, I, I, um, some of my, my biggest part of my story is that I, I grew up in a Christian home and, and I learned a lot about the Bible. I learned a lot about Jesus and his commandments. Uh, and, and so I was, I was surrounded with, with learning and, and growing up in a good Christian environment. But 
long story short, I wasn't really taught how to have a, a relationship with Jesus, how to abide in Jesus. And so I, I filled my life with a lot of things that were not of God to try to fill the void that was in my heart. Because um, something I, I told myself a lot is, is my life feels empty, but there has to be more. There has to be more. Because otherwise, why am I made? What is the purpose of all this? Why am I here if there's not more? So I, I knew that. I knew there had to be more. But no one was telling me where to look. The world was telling me all sorts of things. Um, the world filled me, you know, social media, it'll tell you all sorts of stuff. And the news will tell you all sorts of stuff and, what, what, and how to satisfy your life. And so, I mean, my, my, my God to social media ratio was not very good, if you know what I mean. I, w- I, was, I was just filled with so, many, so much discouragement and, and, and lies about who I really was. And, and so... But the thing is, God, in that moment, even when I was struggling to, to know my purpose in Him, He still spoke to me so much. And, and the, one of the first times was through a youth retreat in grade 10, when uh, the, the speaker there that weekend was just so passionately alive for God. And, and he shared his stories about evangelism and healing. And, this, and, the, and I had never, ever, growing up in the church, heard anyone tell me that they had seen a physical healing before, or that they had... Just, just this bold joy to share their faith. I thought it was maybe just for these special Christians or something that may, were maybe even in the book of Acts. But this was a first, it was a pivotal moment in my life when I realized that if God is really real, then, then I feel like there should be something more for me in that too. I should be able to live my life like this, this speaker was because why not, right? And, and so there, there was this, this, um, this change that came over me and, and even though throughout high school I was still struggling, I knew that there had to be more of God. And, and so God just keeps showing me that there's more of him to go after. And, and the, God leads me to a YWAM after I graduated high school, um, a Youth with a Mission program. So I did a six-month discipleship journey with YWAM. I learned a ton about God. Um, I saw him become real in my life for the first time. God just got rid of old sins and, and old thoughts and just began to really show me how real he was in my life. And I'm so grateful for that experience. Um, and and, and because, because I can say this all, all over again, it's, it's when God became real in my life and he showed me that there was more in him, that there was life in him, there was life in his word, um, there was miracles to be seen in, in, in my life. And, and that changed my life from, from just trying to be good enough for God, from just trying to tick all the boxes to look like a good Christian from the outside when I felt dead and empty on the inside. And, and this, this changed everything when I realized that I could participate in God's kingdom and when I could journey with him, um, with his son in a, in a relational way. Um, and then from then on, God led me after my YWAM journey to Horizon. Um, through my pastor at my local church, he was looking for people that might be interested in taking ministry courses at the local church, and so he found um, Horizon. So he, he was from a PAOC background, even though my church was non-denominational, and, and he, uh, he, he, he um, yeah, we, we found this church, we talked with them, and we ended up finding that they could, we, we ended up being me and his son. So me and uh, my pastor's son, we did the, our full four years together uh, at, at the church, doing our classes, all of our homework there. And so they ended up make, letting us be Horizon's first Zoom students. And they, they, they were so great to us and, and let us do all of our classes online, which is just really incredible. And so we did that. And, and, uh, and, and through those four years, God just began to show me more and more. I, I look at some of these classes like Luke and Acts and uh, Pentateuch, like Genesis to, to Deuteronomy. Just all of these, these classes from the Bible to, to classes in in, in leadership and, and uh, in worldviews as well, the way that I saw God, the way that I saw myself and others, my mind was just continually being blown by the revelation that God was speaking to me. And, and so it just kept pushing me more and more, that there had to be more. And, and as I was getting filled, I knew there had to be more. I knew I couldn't stay at the, at the place that I used to be. I knew that God was saying, Tyrone, you gotta, you gotta run the race. You, you gotta run the mile and, and keep coming after me. So that, that left me at a place where, yeah, I just, knew, um, I, I just knew the only way is that there had to be more of God. And, and so fr- from there, God led me to this uh, job now where, I, ironically, though I did my whole program from, from Winkler, now he called me out to, to, to Saskatoon, um, which has been great. I've been, I've been serving at my job now for about a year, and, and it's just been an incredible journey. 
Uh, but as I get back into my, the rest of my message, I, I wanted to just read from John 17. So I hope, let's see if the slideshow is, if it's uh, ready here, that'd be great. Um, oh, oh yeah, okay. Uh, this, this, this is the comparison I was going to show between Manhattan Beach and the Dead Sea, just for comparison. Thanks, team. Uh, so, so yeah, just, just to show that the, 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 God wants to take us from, not to say that Manitou Beach is bad, but, you know, when you have the chance to go to the Dead Sea, I mean, I feel like most people would take the opportunity. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I hope this, this reading this, the, is, is big enough uh, for you guys to see back there, but if, if not, you can follow with me in your Bibles. It's in John chapter 17, verse 20 to 26, and this is part of a series of verses that God gave me when, when, re, when, I was, uh, when he gave me this message uh, along the topic of God's glory. And, and I entitled this, this message, God Glory Made Manifest, because I feel like it's glory with a purpose. It's not just, oh, you know, in the heavens, you know, you imagine like, uh, you know, just all the white and all, like all the angels and all this kind of stuff. Like, it's not just like this, this far off, distant, un- unrelevant thing. God's glory has a purpose. And I, and I want us to see what that is today. So I'll read from John chapter 17, verse 20 to 26, out of uh, the English Standard Version here. So, um, Jesus says in his high priestly prayer, so these are some of his last words that he's actually saying to his disciples on earth. So he, he's fully aware that he's about to die, but here he is comforting his disciples who are about to abandon him. So think about that for a bit. But he says, I do not ask for those, for these only, talking about the 12 disciples, but for all those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. <laughs> As I was reading this, I, I, this phrase came to mind. I'm calling it Trinitarian participation. <laughs> we're, we're participating in the Trinity, and, and, and I'll get more into that later. So, this, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and love them even as you loved me. And here he says, um, here he says, uh, sorry. yeah, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. We have a capacity to know God. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. So when I was reading this, I mean, the, 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 the phrase, Father, I desire, um, just stood out to me. Father, that I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory. And, and I realized that Jesus isn't wanting just to, to be this hidden, far-off figure. He actually wants to, us to see his glory and to be changed by it, which is just wonderful. And, and, and something that I began to experience, but, but before I realized that there was more to go after God, more to discover of him, I was just living in lack. Um, but when, when this became real in my life, knowing that God wants to, de- he desires to reveal himself to me, it changed everything. So this gives us so much hope and joy in the possibility of having an eternal relationship with God and, and participating in the Trinity that, that Jesus says he is, he is life. He, he, he is our everything. And, and, and this amazing picture where Jesus says that uh, Jesus himself is in the Father, the Father is in him, and, and, and we are in Jesus, and Jesus is in us, and there's this beautiful picture of intimacy that we get to share in the and, and as the Trinity has been perfectly in relationship from the beginning of, of time, Jesus talks about the glory that you've given me before the foundation of the world. The Trinity was, was in this perfect relationship, this perfect union, even before we existed. But now we are called into that. And I can't even imagine, like, I don't even know how to describe to you guys what that actually is. I, I think Honestly, part of my journey, maybe I should be, in terms of seeking what, what God wants to reveal to me next, could be this. Like, what does it mean to be in the Trinity and uh, in, in this relationship with God? Because I, 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 I think there's power on that. Um, 
so uh, it seems that uh, this also it involves some togetherness as well. Because Jesus isn't just talking to, like, you know, just the you singular. He's talking to the you plural. He's talking to all the disciples. And not just the disciples, the, the 12, but all of us who were to come later, talking about us being unified and together um, as we all are in Jesus, um, seeking God together, seeking the throne together, that we become one with God, uh, perfectly one, as he says. So it seems that God's glory isn't meant to just shine through one person, um, but it's meant to shine through the whole body of Christ. And, uh, and, and then there's Jesus in the middle, as it, as it says in Colossians, that Jesus holds all things together by the word of his power. He's holding us together uh, as the body of Christ. Um, so just so powerful. Let that, let that change our, our lives. This is a promise that we can take to the bank. And I challenge you to pray this prayer over yourselves too, where Jesus says, Father, I desire um, that they may see my glory. Just, just, just pray that over yourselves this week. It's, it's my challenge to you as well. So, um, because we were made. We were made to, to receive God's glory, to, to know it, to be, to be as children to receive this. And, and even as, as, as I was thinking and, and preparing this message, there's, there's God's glory, but then there's also, the, in, in a lot of ways, the glory that he wants to give us. Like Jesus talks about, we will receive glorified bodies when we're resurrected. But it even says at the beginning that we were made in God's image in a way that is, is, is purposeful, and, and we get to share in God's glory in that. Um, uh, but you don't have to look too much farther to see that um, because of sin and because of the fall, we, we, we messed up and we fell very, very short of the glory of God. And uh, so, um, yeah, so the, the, the Old Testament goes on to just reveal uh, the struggle of, of God's chosen people who, who he gave everything for. He, there, there was the, the tabernacle with them where there was the cloud and the glory that came down, yet they still chose to rebel against God and it just reveals our, our condition that, that like maybe the kids just seeing Manitou Beach, you know, they, they didn't have the desire to want to go to Israel because they didn't know any different. Like us, we, we struggle to, to want to, uh, even though we see God, we struggle to, to give him our full yes. Uh, and, and so Israel rebelled against God. But here we see God even in the midst of the rebellion and their blatant choosing against him. He shows what he's going to do. Uh, so this is in Isaiah uh, chapter 11, verse 1 to 5, and then uh, I, I skip to verse 9 here. Uh, so, so this is um, God prophesying through Isaiah about the coming Messiah. So he says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins." And, and, and after a little bit more of this prophecy, it goes, he goes on to say in verse 9, For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So he, prophesying this, even though there's all this rebellion, he's prophesying a time when God will reveal the knowledge of himself. And, and also we see, which, which blew my mind when I first saw this, there's a, a verse um, See, uh, a verse in, in Habakkuk as well, which was, it's pretty much verbatim, uh, God talking about this desire, because he read in Isaiah, he says, for the earth shall be filled of the knowledge of the Lord. And here Habakkuk says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So what this spoke to me was that though, though Israel was struggling in rebellion, God chose the moments of their weakness and their hardness of heart to show that he's still going to reveal his glory. God is going to impart his glory into the minds of man to reveal himself as the waters cover the sea. And, uh, and, and so waters are all over the sea. In case you've noticed, the sea is pretty wet. Uh, and so if we, if we can compare that, as, in as much as the sea is water, 
the world will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, which is, I, 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 need, I, need, I need more brain space to comprehend that. Lord, give me that. <laughs> um, so, but what are we going to do with, with this? This is, this is such an incredible promise. How, how is God going to do this? How, how is God going to accomplish this, we might ask? How is God going to fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea? Is it going to be a one-time whoop moment? Um, maybe perhaps when, uh, when the new Jerusalem comes down. But also what blew my mind is when I read um, out, of, uh, out of 2 Corinthians here. So, so Paul, he, 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 knows his, he knows his Bible and he knows what he's saying when he says this. And he says, um, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, with ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ. And, and this is, we see, it's again, it's pretty much the same words that God is showing. He's not going to just do it himself. He wants to use each one of us in, in this and this filling the earth of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, that we are going to be his agents, that he's not calling us to be sideline uh, side Christians. He's wanting to reveal it through, through um, uh, shining in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We are the vessels. Uh, and it also says, um, yeah, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So, I, because I, I think maybe sometimes we have this false humility that, oh, I'm just like, you know, obviously we're all sinners, but we, we kind of, we get stuck, stuck in that, but, 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 but that's, that's not our identity anymore. So we, we know we struggle with sin, but, but God has actually said that we, we have this capacity actually now through the blood of Jesus that we, we are the light of Jesus. We are uh, he wants us to know that we can walk in that, and God's using us in that. Uh, so it's a powerful truth that I want us to really grasp today, because if, if we don't feel like we have anything to offer the world, we, we can struggle with, with our identity and our purpose. But if God wants to use us uh, to shape uh, or, or to show um, his, his glory covering the world, then, then we can know that we have, we have a purpose, we have a reason to live. Uh, and, and 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, just before this, um, Paul says, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Um, did I, yeah, so uh, again, just this amazing opportunity for us not to just do this in our own strength, but we, we take time to be with God, to behold Him, and in that, we become like him. So, I believe that hunger is our response to God's glory. If we realize how much we need him, we need to spend more time with him. And the more that we have, the more we desire. The more we have, the more we will desire. Because the more we experience God, the less we're satisfied with earthly things, which is beautiful. And the more we get to turn our hearts towards heaven and his and, and His. And, and all of its perfection. Um, and, and we just, I, I think the battle right now between our own flesh, between the enemy and between the world is, is to, to in, in whatever the season is, whatever we're tempted to take our eyes off Jesus, is to refocus on God and, and just taking that first step, just to come back and, and ask God, I, I, need, I need a revelation of your glory again. I need more of you again, God. Um, because I've, I've, I've experienced you, but right now I'm struggling again. So show me more of you again. And, and just let God reveal himself to you, because he desires it. So but let, let, us, let us just sit in that um, this week. Be, let, let us be, be transformed by God's glory. Let, us, let, us, let, him, let him just shine on us. And he's going to shine through us. And... Um, yeah, I, I, I would challenge you guys. I, I mean, I, I sense this is a pretty hungry congregation. I, I love the way we were going after God in worship, and, and I want to just encourage you guys in, in that. I believe that God is doing a really powerful work here, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if revival comes to Tisdale. <laughs> I, I, yeah, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, Holy Spirit, come. We need you. Just fill this place, God. Amen. Yes. Um, because that, it, 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 it's going to change us. We, we need God. I need God so much. Um, so, so let's, let's yeah, let, let's, let's joyfully just receive this when God brings it about. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I believe, too, just like personally, God's just been speaking some cool stuff, and, and I feel like he's just been saying that it's, that it, it's time for, for, I think, just to, yeah, I think God's just saying that it's time. That's just kind of the words that I've been hearing, too, is, is that God wants to reveal himself, and it's, it's time for a lot of these things that he's promised to come about. And, and, I, and I believe, too, that God is, is raising up spiritual mothers and fathers, too, who, who are going to get to know him personally and, and become uh, like God to, to other people and, and uh, in this way that God wants his community to, to be filled with, with love for each other and to, to grow together. And, and that's each one of you. Like, you, you don't have to be, you know, mother, father, age to be a spiritual mother or father to someone else um, because there's so many people that are just waiting to hear the love of God. And, and waiting to, to have someone who's just ready to, just to listen to them and who, who are just ready to, to, uh, to yeah, just to have someone show, show what Jesus is like. And so I, th- I think I, I'm not going to have all of these, because these, <laughs> I've elaborated on some other points, so I don't want to take too much extra time. Um, but I want to touch on what I felt most um, important here. So, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And so right now, we see in a mirror dimly, but we're still called to look at him, and we're going to become like him, knowing that we will see him fully one day, and we will fully become like him. So this is our glorious hope. This is what, what, what God has given to empower us to persevere through good times and hard times is to know that we have this capacity. Often it's more through our suffering than the good times. It seems that he's actually making us more like Jesus and shaping us. Um, but this is our hope that we will one day become fully, or we will, see, we will become like Jesus because we're going to see him. So, um, yeah, my, my challenge for you guys is, is what if every believer embraced their capacity to reflect God's glory? What if all of us today took that or just decided in our hearts that I want to be the image of God to, to the people in my life around me? I, I want to spend more time to look at Jesus to become like him. I, I think that especially if we all did this together, imagine the potential of, of the church to really show that when, when, when there's all this hurt, you know, you know we look at the way that... Um, uh, indigenous people were so hurt by the church, you know, back, back in uh, the last century. What if now we had the opportunity to, to really show what the love of Jesus was like and, 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 and just to, to be like Jesus, going to the marginalized and to those that are just struggling in the dark. I think this is an opportunity for us to shine and, and to, be, to, to know that we are so, God is so for us in that. Um, and uh, yeah, he's bringing out, that, I, I think that's part of him bringing out the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, uh, is, is seeing that there's something that's, that's supernatural um, by what the church is doing. Um, yeah, so there's also a verse in Ephesians where God talks about that he's making known in the spiritual realm his, his plans by the church, by us broken people, and, and that it just blows my mind that, that God is using us in that way. So um, I just... <laughs> Wow, I, I, just, I just love this so much. I, I love your, yes, you guys are in this, and I, I just so appreciate that, because I've been, some, some, I, I'm, I'm from a Mennonite background, and not, <laughs> not everyone has the same level of, like, interaction, and I just appreciate that. I, I, I love Mennonites. I, I am culturally a Mennonite. Um, now, I call myself a Mennecostal, kind of, and <laughs> because I've become, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I, just because, God's awesome, and, and I just love being able to be excited with you guys. But before I close, I just, I just want to pray, pray for, for, for you all this morning. Heavenly Father, I, I just thank you that um, I get to be here on, on behalf of you, on behalf of Horizon, and, and just share, share your word. And I just thank you that it's out of the abundance of your goodness that, that I get to testify to your, to your love and, and to your desire for us. And, and, and may you just bless and guide each one here today, throughout this next week, that you would give them the supernatural strength to, to, to persevere, to seek you, to know you, 
to love you and to be your light to others. Um, Lord, would you, would you bring healing to, to hearts, to people that maybe struggle to believe this about themselves. Um, may you give them strength and perseverance and, and guide them in how you want to equip them and show them your, your glory, Lord. We believe in, in, in more of you and, and we just invite you to come. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. And again, if you have any questions about Horizon, feel free to come check me out in the back later. Thank you.
get shy on me, lift up your tongue. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath. Hosanna, great are you, Lord. Jesus, we love you. It doesn't matter what the song is, Lord, but let our hearts be bursting with your spirit. And it just comes out. And if we can't make words that make sense to us, let it make sense to you, Lord. Oh, praise Jesus. We thank you so much. Thank you so much for your spirit. Thank you so much that you talk to us continuously. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, as we go out this week and do our jobs, Lord, that your spirit is bubbling in our lungs, waiting to come out and testify of your greatness. to talk to us. We thank you, Lord, for your greatness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your desire to be the banner over our hearts. Bless each one here this morning and those watching online.
Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Thank you.